6D diesels. Right, so today we are supposed to be boating, but as you'll notice, we're missing a fudger because he's been collared for missus based stuff that he wasn't allowed to get out of. So disappointing, I know. Not on fudger's behalf, but um, on your lot, I do apologise. We won't be boating this week. We'll try and do it next week because I don't really want to go boating on my own. Might need two of us. So I decided what I'd do instead is drag this poor thing out of its hole uh, using the rope and the freeloader, finally yard base use for the freeloader, um, round into the workshop and see if I can get, well, that is, a manifold gasket, I can go in the bin, a dear old Audi 80 to function after God knows how many years so that we can sell it as a runner rather than just sell it as a non-runner. That's kind of plan. Um, so using Gaylander, mate, but sorry, Freelander, using the Freelander rope, um, it got to here. Now we have some um, slight tyre demounting problems, so we're going to sort that now, blow the wheels up. Uh, some numpty might have left it parked with the handbrake on, don't know who that was. Um, might be a bit exciting pumping these tyres up, because we've got some dry rot going on, or maybe we could call that wet rot. But anyway, it's out. So we can make it roll. We've only got to get the Freelander back from in front of it, move a veto and get it on a ramp. Once I've got the tyres back on the rim. So I'm going to get the tyres back on the rims now. And I'd like to point out I have not damaged that rim at all by dragging it across the yard. It's nice and squishy and it's absolutely fine. Affected, affected four blown up tyres and whatever there was a bit exciting and I must admit if you look at the time lapse man might have jumped when it went ponk and blew on the rim because he thought he was going to end up wearing most of it yeah, but they are on blown up and they are a bit cracked um so we've got the bonnet open to gas strut she may be a bit weak so we have installed a professional bonnet prop so 2.5 five cylinder 20 valve as far as i can remember atronic injection audi petrol engine car's done around the 150 on the miles it's manual um some numpty left it parked with the handbrake on might have been me don't know why i did that so at the moment <coughs> i don't think oh it does roll we are in the rollings that's good the brakes have come off then so now we've got blown up tires it rolls what we're going to do is wash on this bit to make it look a bit more respectable. Uh, get rid of all the gack on here using the steam cleaner and then get it on a ramp because what we know the main problem is, obviously as all of this hasn't packed up, is that the fuel doesn't make it from the tank at the back to the front. It just comes out on the floor. So we've got to figure out a way of either plumbing it in to a remote tank to see if we can get it to run because I think... Uh, um, we've got some fuel. I'll figure that out. Because uh, the fuel line's down there somewhere. And that could be quite painful. But anyway, we'll get it to a running clean stage. Oil on some stuff. I did do the cam belt 10 years ago, so we're just going to assume that that's good. And then hopefully it turns over. It'll have the sparks and stuff. And if we can persuade this thing to throw fuel at it, it might go. Right washing.
looks a bit better. All you car valeters out there cringing, going, oh God, he steamed the roof. Well, yeah, I know, but I think it'll be all right. I'll scrape it off in a bit. It's a bit got a green googe on it. And the roof's pretty good because it's not even that wet in here. So what we're going to do now is push this in there because we've moved that, moved that, moved that, moved the recovery truck, moved the freelander out of the way. We now have clear passage to get this on a ramp so we can look at the fuel lines. Ah, oh, doesn't look too bad now. Could do with obviously a good clean the polish and then we're going to have to inspect on how, uh, how bad. Hood prop. Hood prop, bonnet prop. We're English, aren't we? Right, bonnet prop. Cause heavy. Yeah, perfect. So now we've made everything in here soaking wet. What I'm going to try and do now. Uh, not we'll blow it off with an airline a bit. We'll get an airline, blow it off, and we're going to install a battery and see. We know the fuel pump probably will be stuck again, even though it was new like two years ago, but it's going to be full of some manga petrol. And I know the fuel line to the front of the back doesn't work, but hopefully this will still sort of turn over. There's possibilities. I'm going to get my airline, blow it all off, and then put a battery on it and see what happens. everything with right. Anyway, I have, and you won't believe it, this is a new battery. Bought this like three months ago to go on a Saab that died, so it's El Nuvo and should work, and I'm gonna wood a uh, uh, water dispersant 40th attempt, if you never knew that. Uh, everything, just to make me feel better about the fact that I've soaked the entire vehicle, and um, the electrics may be slightly damp. But obviously, being a water dispersant, it's designed to disperse water. It's a bit of a giveaway. So we'll just make everything nice and greasy. Because I think most of the stuff we're going to have to attend to is going to be underneath. So, fire in explosion testing. Ooh. The key is in it and the ignition is on. Ooh, we're beeping. Does it turn over? Hopefully the cam belt doesn't snap. Do the windows work? Look at that! Right, windows work. Four sprung dirt technique and all that. Does it turn over? It does! Right, next thing we need to attend to before we work on the fuel system, is we'll throw some sniff up its nose, once a man's worked out where on earth the air filter thing is, and see if it fires. Because if it fires, we know, obviously, that we've got a... Um, a spark 
which is be amazing because I haven't cleaned or touched anything. Right, I'm pretty sure this bit comes out of here. Like that covered in green mouldy stuff and allows a man to squirt sniff straight into the air filter. Like that. So let's give it a good dose of sniff and see if it fires. Come on, Mr. Audi, you know you want to play ball. So we have spark, bit of valve train noise, that's um, sort of expected. I suppose we ought to have checked in the air box to see if there aren't any rodents, but anyway, they'll have been nicely sucked in by now, so we've sort of ruined that idea. Right, so we've got the sparks, <coughs> we have turning, we have compression. So what we're going to need to attend to now is fuel and fuel pumps. I shall just refit this piece here. And then we may see if we can get in there just to check that Al hasn't managed to successfully suck three baby mice and a load of cack into the intake manifold. Which probably won't help things. I think what we need to do now, I've got the ramp legs underneath, obviously. Um, and... Uh, I've revitalised on me twat mug again by sticking the handle on for the fifth time. I've even put up a lighting tower. Better exposure in picture. That's why you're blind and you can't see over there. Because otherwise you can't see anything. So we're going to hit the big button, make squawky noises, because we're not talking about that ramp. Um, it might be slightly playing up. It likes making squawky noises. Don't think it's anything bad. Um, and we'll lift this here Audi right up in the air and then we're going to survey of what's left of the underside after I left it in a bush for five years. Here it goes. And no squawky noises! Might fix that. High speed ramp this. Good for holding the button and drinking your tea. that the man's idea of steaming this off might have been a bit dim because it's a bit like a sort of rainforest rain shower under it now but we'll be fine we'll be fine what we're going to do is we're going to bring you lot in here with me and then we can inspect on the underside of the car and we knew the exhaust was falling off when we parked it up and it may not have improved itself because it looks like it has now properly fell off but if i bring you in here we'll have a look at that and then we can survey the fuel pump and the fuel lines and I'll just for quality purposes remove that bit of bush just there. So we are under an Audi 80, slightly drippy one. So as you can see that's the catalytic converter. That can probably be thrown away because we don't need one of those, might not get away with that. And the exhaust may not be in the best of fettles. It is only the outer tin shield that seems to have rotted off of it. Um, We've got a bit of uh, a bit of greenery going on there. We'll just get rid of that for quality purposes. We'll have that out of there. That's much better. Cobwebs. But as you can see, due to Audi's quality under sealing, it's amazing what happens when you actually under seal a car, <coughs> major manufacturers, um, it has pretty much no gout. And I'd like to point out, it wasn't me that bent that bit there. It was already bent when I got it. But she is a rock solid. Now the problem will come that, where's the fuel pump? Uh, there's the fuel pump. I did chuck a second hand one in it last year. So as you can see, uh, this line here isn't very good. So we've got to attend to basically, obviously these lines come down here and as you can see, this one, uh, she has died. 
and goes all the way to the front. Now, what a man was thinking was purely for high speed purposes, if I can get that there to function again, uh, by beating on it basically, is that I could probably just flare the ends of this for a minute and then put some uh, like high pressure fuel hose on it just to allow us to see if we can get pressurized fuel to the Catronic at the front or whatever it is to get it to start. And, um, and then once we started, we decide what we do with it. Because I mean, it is pretty reasonable, bless its old heart. I think exhausts are pretty much out of stock now, but I have a feeling I bought a new silencer like six years ago, never feared it. Can't remember where I put it, but it'll be here somewhere. Because that bit's all right. There, we can sort of, we can split it there. And that catalytic converter, well, it's quality Vorsprung Dirt Technique part, that is. But it might be a bit frilly there. As long as you don't hit it, it'll be fine. And then, so, you can see the sort of design of these 80s. So, obviously, it's a bit like, but it's pre-A4, but then Audi started doing this, didn't they? So, you've got a gearbox here. And then, obviously, the engine's hanging right out over the nose. Anyway, I'm waffling now. I'm just going to pick more uh, hedge out of the wheels just there. She's even got the ABSs. Bosh, eh? So, you'll have to excuse the slight windy farty noises in the background. That isn't me, by the way. That's the fact that most of the tyre valves appear to be slightly leaking and rotted off. And the tyres aren't much better. But obviously, this here is the main tank out fuel supply hose. This is the return that is broken. So then you've got pump in, out, pump over here. Big plastic line goes down. Mm, is it plastic line? Yes, it is plastic line. Big plastic line whizzes down over here into whatever that thing is there. Out of that sort of fuel pressurised thingy into the filter and then to the front of the car. And I'm pretty good sure that it's the line to the front of the car that was all right. But it's the fact that the return line, uh, which is this one uh, to there, is broken. So we need to affect a fuel return line from here to over there. Then see if we can make this function to pump fuel after we found some fuel that doesn't smell like death. And, um, and if we make this work, that'll probably function because it's made by the Germans. And then as long as it pressurizes fuel to the front without spewing it all on the floor and blows it back to the tank without spewing it all on the floor, we might be somewhere near. So I'm probably going to do some time lapsey type stuff now and try not to wear whatever is alive in this fuel tank all over myself. I think that's a stunning idea. Is the load sensing valve seized? Oh no, it isn't. Look at that four sprung, hey? Just buy German motors. They're good. <laughs> This is the um, electric fuel pump off of said Audi. They're in like this, but it's like a standard electric fuel pump inside, but it's in a big rubberized protected plastic case. So what we've got to try and do is get this to function, and not set fire to ourselves. Because we had a bit of an exciting experience years ago doing this on a really nice B reg wide arch super a man dragged out of a shed. And um, <coughs> yes, yeah, quite an exciting day. Nearly, yeah, nearly bought the farm. So, we filled it full of penetrating oil. It's a bit less flammable than the um, than the petroleums. And what we're going to do now is stab at it with 12 volts to see if it'll function, or possibly we have to stab at it with 24 volts. As you can see, it's a bit solid. We don't want to kill it or we are dead in the water. Let's try stabbing at it with 24 volts. That is definitely stuck.
Пога. Can hear him trying to turn. I'll go and stick a load of um. Yeah, and some brake cleaner up its arse and see if that frees it off. Right, let's we'll see if we're any further forwards. Fire. Come on, you. cleaner over everything. Right. So, first one. Died. No, it don't work. Mark 2. Golf. On the shelf. Mark 1. Golf, sorry. Uh, we have successfully poured. Where's the red one gone? Uh, it's got hold of the red one, it's black one. So, after a bit of bashing, wiggling, because uh, this has been sat on the shelf for about 20 years, uh, we have the fuel pumpages. So, what we need to do now... So that's Mark 1 Golf GTI, Audi 80, same fuel pump. Need to insert this back in this big plastic house, put the thing back together. Finds proper blue terminal that a man bust off of there earlier for screwing it on with. Stick that back on there. And then put this back on a Udi. And see. I reckon it'll pump fuel, that's not the worry. Is that in there? No, not quite. Just firm up. There we go. Refreshed. Badly. Be fine. Put a bit of square up its arse just to help it. And then we'll go and refit this to a car. Back in. Uh, return pipe rejoined. Uh, this may. Not look like a bit of fuel hose because it is actually a bit of fine pressure airline, but it'll do. Um, so this pump functions as long as the wiring. So we've got solen re solenoid up the front, or solenoid relay, relay running this pump. He may have given up, they normally do, and then we need to open the rest of this um, old air, basically. Not air, fuel, fuel, old fuel. I think I'll leave that unless I can get it out, particularly will that fall off. Yes, rubbish. And then we're going to try and see, put some petrol in this and then see if it'll pump fuel to the front. So, what we're listening for now is fuel pump noises, which will help. Would help if I had the key. When did I put the key in my pocket? Because I had to attack the fuel flap to get it to open. Right. So, fuel pump noises. Fuel pump noises. Yeah. Primed fuel pump noises. Let's try it. Oh, it's possible. It's making some proper funky noises, isn't it? <laughs> oh, bless it. No, not quite. No. That's me fuel pump relay not staying in. Let's have a look. Torch. Hmm, 
fuel pump really is a bit green and gooey. That will not be helping, will it? Oh, I don't see if it's that that's doing it. Oh, yes. That is a bit lanky looking. Oh, oh I think we've got a fuel leak somewhere. <laughs> yes, we definitely have got a fuel leak somewhere. Let's go and have a look at that. Right, fourth time lucky, three fuel leaks later. somewhere near might need to go and get some petrol stop windscreen wiping windscreen wipers have a pin up we are away He lives! Never a bit smoky and a tad rattly, it's not bad for the rattliness. I think the K-Tronic might want to clear itself out a bit. Well, hopefully there's no rodents about to burst into flames down there. Don't sound bad for five or six years, does it? One running five cylinder Audi. Let's just put the waterproof cover back on the fuse box before a man forgets, and then it fills up with water when we put it back outside in a bit. I think the catalytic converter may be blowing a bit. And we've got a fairly massive fuel leak by the look of things. It's all part of it. Right, we're going to tend to a fuel leak again for the sixth time and see we can get it to stay running and not set fire to me. Well, what we have discovered is that the fuel line that returns to the tank is blocked up going into the tank. So I have had effect, or to effect this slightly exciting uh, fuel filler based return at the moment. Hopefully, that doesn't, the fuel compressor is not controlled that end. So basically, in theory, till I take the fuel tank out and sort that, that's a much happier fuel pump. Right, now we are away and we shouldn't be blowing fuel out all over the floor. He said. So we ain't pumping fuel from there, are we? No, we're all right on the fuel side of things. And we got a little bit of fuel there, so that's fine. So basically, let's let her warm up. Bit of a blow there, but I reckon top the coolants up because they're a little bit low. Let her run a bit. Yeah, marvellous. Right, well, it's alive. And then it stopped and it's mobilised itself. I do remember it doing this before. 
Sadly, I can't remember why. So save tearing all the electrics out this evening. I've disconnected the battery. I'm going to let it forget it's immobilised itself and start again. It's a bit of an Audi 80 thing, because that's what the other one does. And this one does the same. So we'll work on that a bit later, but it is alive. It's definitely going to want a forwards and front to back fuel line, at least one of them. Um, and I will consider putting some tyres on it, sorting the brakes out. The roof works. Um, it is manual, but everything pops and lifts as it should. I tried that earlier. Um, it's going to want a back window. I mean, the back window is there, but it's very opaque and it's starting to crack up. Um, but I think she's well and truly savable. Um, do apologise for no boating this week. Don't shout at me. It's just because Fudge is absent and I don't want to go boating without him because it won't be as much fun. So thank you very much. Now, 60 diesels. Oh, actually, before I forget, we have got something else. Now, I had a lovely lady in Australia called Hazel contact me. Um, and she's done a, she does water colouring. She's got a little YouTube channel that she's just started. And her and her husband are subscribers and fans. So she painted a picture of me and Fudgy in our Batman and Robin costumes and then sent it all the way from Australia to us. So I'm going to go and wash on me dirty, greasy paws a minute. I'm going to go and show oh, you. Sorry, me. Yeah, yeah, me. Sorry, right, Doofy. Don't worry. Good girl. Good girl. Come here, Doofy. Hop, 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 hop. You want to come up? No. Doofy's not making camera appearances this evening. You haven't met Doofy. Doofy is more spadangle. Well, Doofy has got a massive Christmas Yule log. Ah, uh, Doofy has made appearance. Hello, Doofy. Oh, sorry, have I stolen you? Yes, I've stolen the Christmas Yule log. Anyway, as I was saying, Lovely lady from Hazel. Paints a picture of me and Fudgy um, in our Batman and Robin costumes in a three-wheel van. And sent it all the way from Australia. So I have now obviously got home, washed on me grubby mitts, and which allows me to touch things that are white. Um, now Hazel has started, she does water colouring, painting, and then she started her own little, little YouTube channel. I'm gonna put a link in the description to her YouTube channel and a little video of edited video of her painting this picture. So could you please all do me a favour and um, one, go and have a look, hit the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Remember, it doesn't cost anything. Subscription is free. There's no charge, no nothing. It just helps us all along. And um, I'll quickly show you this um, watercolour and the two figurines because I had to go and snaffle Fudgy's one back off of his toolbox. Luckily enough, he hadn't taken it home with him. Um, and um, a big thanks to... Thanks for that, husband. Cheers, guys. And uh, I'll show you this now. Look at that. I mean, I think that's a good likeness of me. And um, a very talented person. And we've got a little little fudge. And we've got a little owl. So, yeah. Go and have a look at the link in the description. Um, go and have a look at her channel. I say give her a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button. Get the girl going. Because she's only just started. And um, that'd be much appreciated. Right, that will do me for the evening. Thank you very much, Al. 60 Diesels.